bring it to bring it, bring it, bring it to your life. Il y a des choses qui se passent à Montréal et puis il faut en parler. Il va falloir faire la pression de dire, yo, this is our street, man. Montreal is getting very serious, especially with the music business. 2005 and on, people are going to start to get hurt. You know what I mean? Il faut que ça soit une vraie business. Il faut que ça soit une joke. Je pense pas après 12 ans dans une game, t'as envie de niaiser puis dire, oh, je fais ça pour le love, whatever, là. I paid my motherfucking dues. <laughs> Competition to me is stimulation in hip hop. If it's physical, if it's all that shit, then it's not hip hop. We just need people to wake up in Montreal and put, be more open minded to hip hop. There's more and more people, there's more and more vendors, there's more and more spectacles. They're so full of that. For the moment, they don't have anything to say. They just want to touch the rap. They're making discs, they're singing. They're singing anyone. It's the world at the man. There are artists who are here that you're in the United States, you won't have ever worked in Europe. There are plenty of people who come here. Ils dorment, c'est l'heure de se lever. Tu sais qu'ils sont de bottes, c'est l'heure qu'ils aillent dormir. C'est pas des trucs de magie, là, où tu peux euh, arrêter ta job, puis commencer à rapper, puis faire un emploi de, de ça, là. Pour apprendre à ces jeunes comment faire une mise en marché, comment faire ce rap de merde, comment pas avoir la frousse. Il faut que les gars, ils commencent à savoir c'est quoi Montréal, parce que c'est pas normal qu'il y ait quoi. Montréal, on est carrément local, mais j'espère que ça va pouvoir avancer. J'ai des choses à dire. Puis le monde sont prêts à l'entendre. when I first came in contact with hip hop personally. Before that, I used to live in Sherpa, Quebec, and we had MTV, which they didn't have much music or nothing up here yet. So I think I got a little exposed a bit earlier than most cats up here. My name is Miz, Misery. That's short for Misery, that name. And basically, uh, right now, I'm an artist. The hip hop crowd, they change every three, five years. I mean, people grow up and stop going to hip hop shows. So whoever was there, when I was performing, most likely if I go to a hip hop show right now, they don't know me from Boo. They might have not heard my name, but they don't know me. I mean, they never heard me themselves, you know what I mean? I guess uh, one of my brother's friends came over, taught us a few ticket moves, taught us the moonwalk and the Boston Crab, or whatever it was called at the time, you know what I mean? Hand spin and all that. And from there, I guess we started writing rhymes around the hood just to basically diss each other. Like it was just a bragging thing. My name is Arcade and I'm ready to rule. Rappers start to leave because they don't have the tools to beat me, defeat me, don't try to unseat me. So it went on like that. It was just like, you know, a little hype, braggadocious, you know, rhyme back in the day. The fucking Cynix production. Yes. You know, Genuine, oh. Kick Ave, you have, you have Blaze, you have Godfather D, you have uh, Wise, you have, how uh, do Dazzle, you have Sala. I'm going to one or two, là, désolé, but these guys, they covered all the elements rap, DJ, break, graffiti, everything. Basically, I started back uh, in 88. Uh, I'm from Shamdi, Laval, see home DY, what's up to all the people chilling. Um, and basically what happened was, you know, I had a love, a passion for hip hop, uh, was in, you know, into the music, was listening to it extensively. And how I got my start was almost by mistake. These guys were in your face, man. You understand? They brought something original to the game. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of guys like... I'm afraid of guys like Misery. And then there was another cat named Soldier, and he was just... He was a scary dude. This guy was like six foot four, you know what I mean? Dark, big beats, 
uh, uh, you know, army gear and just didn't look happy. Later on, he would go on by the name of Misery. But this is the first time I saw Soldier. So that's how I first started MCing. He was like the Tupac of Montreal, and I mean that not as far as the floor or anything like that. I meant as far as that when he used to rap, he used to feel it. And the crowd used to, you know, get into it. And I remember people singing, Get a Life, man. He would be singing that song and people going off. Depuis qu'il montait sur stage, là, tout le monde après c'était. Yo, si si c'est vulgaire, aka Mega Rock, sur le 514-411, rapping CMC, RDP, Rivière, Montréal, all over the place. When I first came here, the, the thing that really struck me was how, um, how small and united the, the, the scene that I was part of was back then. The, the, the feeling in Montreal coming from Toronto. City was just so much more warmer in terms of a much more neighborly feel. People were a lot closer. It felt like the crews were helping one another. You know, whereas coming from Toronto, it was a lot more competitive. You know, not competitive in a friendly way, but you know, just competitive in a kind of like me or you kind of a thing. You know, I think it was more intimate. You know, what I'm saying and less politics. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Right I'm God D, you know what I'm saying? St. Lowe's number one son. A heavenly one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Capital ZIP Zip Locks representing the Butter Babies crew and hip hop amongst y'all from long time. Yeah. What up, DJ Raid representing Ill Groove, Butter Babies crew, all that. DG Montreal North, alongside with Man Child. Man Child, what's up? What's up? What's happening? Uh, Trinity, Ethiopia, African, Asia, Asia, Aboriginal, Navy, Naturalistic, Conscious, Spirit, Travel, Linguistic, Creative, man. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? We consider conscious MCs. And there was a few other conscious MCs also. There was Crime X that, that was dropping knowledge. Uh, there was Lord DVX. I remember when I first moved here, I seen, um, what's his name? DVX. You know what I'm saying? He had that. <laughs> he had that robe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The whole thing over his head. Lord, he was Lord DVX back then. That's the first time I remember I went to a show in Montreal. That's what I remember about it. Brothers of Concept, Brothers of Concept, you know, everybody, you know, everybody knows DJ Smokey. DJ Smokey used to be the DJ for this group. And what they would do is, uh, it was amazing because they had two dancers, amazing dancers, Dice and Gogo. -Go. They had an amazing rapper, uh, Sport D, uh, you know, and the Sport D was like a 16 year old cat dressed you know what i mean Dr always dressed well and you know he was the brother that could you know flip the baddest rhyme with a lisp and he was on point and he just made it hot and then they had a hype man named ziggy and ziggy used to chant and this is what was so amazing because back in 89 because you know uh, the majority of the blacks here in montreal have west indian backgrounds you know what i mean it was very easy to implement um, the reggae aspect and mix it with the hip hop because a lot of these people have Jamaican de descent, you know, West Indian, Trini, uh, Haitian, well, whatever. So this was happening before it was accepted in in, in in the States, where, you know, where you see like, you know, uh, Shaba with, with KRS-One. Montreal was doing this years before. It's not real rap, you don't have to like Puff Daddy, man. <laughs> Back in the day when I used to listen to the music, you know what I mean, the only hip-hop that was coming out was, you know, on uh, 90.3, and it was the Sound Supreme show, and that was, uh, uh, who was Sound Supreme show? Sound Supreme show was uh, Flight and LDG, man, and these guys were cool because they were the first ones that used to be constantly promoting hip-hop at all times. So then uh, I remember I just harassed and calling, calling all the time, calling the request, yo, I got a demo, I got a demo, please listen to my demo, please listen to my demo. As far as, like, DJing and all that element of it, I first got exposed to scratching by DJ Butcher T. Yeah, I mean, he, that was back in 86, he used to live in a basement near my house. In Montreal, the people that I was listening to on the Sound Supreme show was... Uh, you know, uh, I was listening to Flight, which a lot of people don't know was the first MC ever in Montreal. When he was 16, he cut a 12 inch, you know what I mean? So a lot of people don't know the first MC ever was Flight. So there was Flight, then there was uh, Positively Fly and Tape MC. Uh, the breakdance click in LaSalle was uh, Rock Steady, rock, uh, no, High Steady Click, that's what it was. The High Steady Crew, you know what I mean? And their front MC was Chuck Ice, who was the baddest MC, terrorize anybody, freestyling from way back in the day. What blew my mind about Chuck Ice, Chuck Ice was the first MC that I saw that, that that had that same vibe and flavor 
that you saw back in the States. You know what I mean? You saw him. He was like the Canadian LL Cool J. You know what I mean? He came there. He was confident. You know, uh, I remember one of his lines, spectacular, uh, night vision, just like Dracula. He was hot with his. You know I mean, he had a track called OPP. Apparently, word was that Naughty by Nature and them bit the hook. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have the same rhymes or the same topic or the same beat. But apparently, the hook was originally from Chuck Ice. This guy really believed what he was saying. You know, he was coming off and he was untouchable. And you just, you know, I got off my vibe. Like, when I watched him, I said, okay, this is what an MC has to be. OPP, or we'll let Park Posse, that's what they were called back then, you know what I mean? So basically, his rap was about us. LDG was a top-notch uh, DJ in Montreal, and he was a DJ for Chucky. Exactly, yeah, it was a DJ for Chucky. And then, later on, I came in contact, well, Chucky, I never knew him, but I used to see him around the way, you know what I mean? He was always fly, I was dipped, I was at Gold Chain, like, he was a real MC up to now. Anytime you see Chuck ready for a show, you know what I mean? He looked like the real thing. I gotta give him that, you know what I mean? He always did it as big as he could, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, when his album came out, he had to do a little time for a little dirt he was doing at the time. Got held up at the borders, you know, whatever, whatever. So he wasn't even there when his career popped off, you know what I mean? So he's the first really Montreal English rapper that I know, you know what I'm saying? And back then there was a white rapper called Snow White. He used to rap like Chuck D, you know what I'm saying? The baddest DJ ever, DJ Choice, uh, who later went on to hook up with... Um, the Batik, you know, he was he was their DJ, but back in the day, this guy would just rip up shows, you know what I mean? He would do his solo, and people would be like, what the hell? This guy was, you know, he, he had the same discipline for, for his DJing that he did for, for his martial arts, because this guy was a martial artist. I used to go to his house and see all, like, these plaques and trophies and stuff like this, so this guy would just sit there and train for hours. So he is the predecessor for all these DJs who, you know, who used to, you know, who are in DMC co competitions in, in Montreal now, you know what I mean? He was the original. I can't just say him. It was also um, this dude, uh, also a DJ. I can't remember his name. He used to wear a raccoon's hat from MRF, uh, Movement Rap Francophone. First French rap group, I think, was MRF, the ones I knew, at least, you know what I mean? And he was hot for the time as well. Like, he was up to par as far as what the Americans were doing at the time. Like, beat-wise, his beat was up to par. The DJ he had was up to par, you know what I mean? And his lyrics, I guess, for the time was up to par. So, really, he was the equivalent, you know what I'm saying? Back then, MRF, MRF, there was Corporal. Corporal. So, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in this tournament, uh, in this competition, and I'm going up against guys like uh, that I'm hearing for the first time, like Jay Soul. I never heard of him, so I'm checking him out. And he had this track called Simon Say, and I said, okay, this song, this song's bad. What? Yeah. Jay Soul? And they hooked up with, um, they hooked up with Mr. Face, and they they were a part of Most Wanted. And then they had Corporal, so they had a group. Jay Soul's the dernier. Jay Soul, the tout le soul tribe. Yeah. Jay Soul had a very uh, energetic um, stage show. Dice was with him back in time. He was one of his hype men. Uh, he had a few other people, and they would just swarm. They were like, you know, they were like pre Wu Tang. They'd be like 15 guys on stage, and they would be like ripping the shows. And you know what I mean? And, and his background is Haitian, and the majority of the people were now that coming to the show were Haitian. Who DJ Genius later on became, well, he used his own name, Jeremy Shard, uh, Jeremy Harding, yeah. who is Sim Sima, who got the keys to my Pima, produced that shit, who produced that shit yeah. brought out Sean Paul and all Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, man. The first video I ever saw was Freaky D, a female MC. She was the first Montreal video that was out there, you know what I mean? And, you know, she was conscious and she was breaking it down. So I said, okay, well, listen, Montreal is where I have to be. They have a key on the call, uh, The Arcade, man, you know? Yo, my name is Arcade. Represent MTL, Montreal, Montreal, all that good stuff. MC. I used to run with a crew called Death Threat way, way back in the day. That was like... Man. 93, 92, something like that. 92, I came out with a single. Uh, I hooked up with my boy Ziploc, uh, who's now uh, with the Butter Babies. We were actually Montreal's first crew to release a video way back then. We put out an album. It was just a mini EP with six songs. And what was great about that, it was the first hip-hop album from Montreal that was actually in the stores, of the English, because the MRF was, was the first French album, uh, but I'm not sure if it got into the stores. But this was at h &B. You can go to h &B and pick this up. You could have went and picked this up in Sam's. So I was like, wow. Our group, Death Threat, name of the album was Just Chill. Our single was Reminisce to the Temple. We did a video. It was on uh, Much Music and Music Plus. Um, Zero Tones was coming out. And then, like I said, it was like the new age. And it was like the second crew of rappers that were coming out. And they were all hot, and they were all hungry, and they wanted to prove themselves. Just having fun with it since then. I remember hip hop from being like 14 and sneaking out of my crib and getting grounded to go see a KRS-One show. Public Enemy and all of that to like, I mean, 
block holes and parties in the park. Dedicated, you know what I'm saying? Like break dance when I was a little youth in like elementary school and just hearing beats on the radio or going down to New York and getting mixtapes and bringing them back to Montreal and stuff. So Montreal's been absorbing the hip hop flavor from New York and everywhere else from time. And then it's starting to create its own stuff. For me, it was freestyling. Nobody was freestyling back in the day. You know, it was very rare. And uh, it was just something that I was able to, to pick up, you know what I mean? It, it was just second, it was second nature, you know what I mean? The rhymes are felt, me just chilling right here with my championship belt as I keep on doing it, you know what I mean? I drop it, I see the camera, I'm laughing, it says Panasonic. Yo, I do it right now like no brother, I check it, it says 3CCD, true color. As I keep on going, you know, I stay a while. If I check out your jersey, it says Crocodile, you know what I mean? So it was just like, you know, second nature. So people were like freaking out, they, they couldn't believe that. Like, you know, are you really freestyling? So I'd be like, okay, point at things. And as they would point at things, you know, I mean, I'd be able to do it. They had a, 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 a club called Climax on St. Catherine back in the days. Salsa Plus, whatever. You know what I mean? And they used to have the Fitz and Fabian used to have these, these talent competitions, you know, being on Sunday night. So they would either have dance competition, girls would get up there, sometimes got out of control, you know what I mean? I went there and I won the one battle one week, and it was $100, you know what I mean? So that became my paycheck. In my mind, it became like every week I'm going to go there and get that $100. So 89, the first show I ever did in Montreal was at Checkers. Uh, I don't know what the club was, uh, you know, what, what the club is now, but back in the day it was Checkers. So it was a serious competition and it started like, like I think I think, I think think it was like some pimp threw it, you know what I mean? He was the promoter of it, he was, he was the one that was in charge of it. The first prize was, uh, I don't know, a thousand dollars or so, some kind of stuff like that. And everybody... Uh, try to get into the competition. A lot of battles were fueled by competition, I think. I mean, whether it was in the hood or whether it was at a show, really, that's all it was. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Competition to me is stimulation in hip-hop. If it's physical, if it's all that shit, then it's not hip-hop. If worse comes to worse, if you got a dispute over who's who, like, I can't even freestyle on a cypher without dissing people. That's why I don't like freestyling. Whenever there's a cypher, the cats come running like, yo, let's freestyle, let's freestyle. I don't like freestyling because I'm going to start insulting the cats around me because me, I'm a battle rapper, you know what I'm saying? That was a, a requirement, that you had to battle rap. I remember uh, Ruff from Rough and Easy wanted to take me out in the back and um, beat me because, you know what I mean, I didn't know who he was and these guys were like hardcore cats and as soon as there was a cypher, I used to go in there and I used to rip. I that That's what I used to pride myself on, on battle MCing, you know what I mean? I, and at that time, it wasn't anything personal, it was just to show how good you are as far as skills. You gotta remember, uh, Performing hip hop in Montreal wasn't uh, uh, something that was normal. It wasn't something that was easily accepted. So if you were rapping, you had to be good because Montreal crowd was was very very indifferent. C'était les gars qui allaient dans la face des autres gars ou des filles qui allaient dans la face de d'autres filles puis disaient t'es wack. Tu t'es su, tu peux. You know what I mean? Montreal is one of the places in the world where when they see stars, celebrities, or whatever, they're the, yeah, whatever, that's nice, you know what I mean? Where everybody else would be, oh, we're impressed. It, there, you gotta be twice as good as impressed. So, as far as the battling element, it was so important. You had to get in there. I'd come in there, I'd look at what this guy was wearing, and then I would just try to rip at him, you know what I mean? And, and I would do that a couple of times, and that helped build my name, because then they'd be like, yo, look at that kid, that kid RK, that kid's trouble, you know what I mean? And it's so funny, because Misery always used to say it. I used to always be looking for trouble. And actually, it gets kind of low, you know what I'm saying? Because in a battle, that's where I come from, you know what I'm saying? So, so me, you try to get as dirty as you can, you know what I'm saying? You try to hurt the person as bad as you can. So there's really no limit, you know what I mean? Me and this cat could battle, you know what I mean? And we could either shake hands or not shake hands, but at least we were cool. I could walk down the street. Now, people take it so much personal. So, you know what I mean? Is battling a part of hip hop? Yeah, but there's rules and regulations to do it, you know what I mean? Back in the days, you tacked this hard beef with KCL, I'm on a P2 at some point. That name. I think that's actually what gave me my name because I moved out of my parents' house. I was in school, had no loot, had no gear. And you can only bring out your good shit because, you know what I mean? If you got on stage and you didn't represent, you had me or you had Jay Soul or you had Mr. Faze from the I Spy crew, or, you know what I mean? Coming and looking for you. Ton shit était pas tight, on monte sur stage, puis on bomb rush. On tasse tout ce qui est pas bon. Everybody was stepping up. Pendant que le gars est en train de performer on stage, tout d'un coup, tout le monde, tout le monde, rush ton stage ou ben, fou ton stage, full de garbage dessus, man. Pennies were thrown, then bottles. Des cups de verre, des plateaux, 25 cents. Uh, 25 cents. Also, uh, I remember uh, doing the show, opening up for Redman. It was Redman, uh, Too Short, um, it was Keith Murray, 
and Biz Marquis, and it was a show here in Montreal. So whatever, so Redman's doing a show, and the crowd is going into it, but they're not going into it as much as him. So he's getting frustrated, because he, there's one part where he's rapping, he goes, um, I die quicker, or you die quicker than Bruce Will Willis, or whatever. So he goes, I die, I uh, die harder than, and they're supposed to say Bruce Willis, and every, all you hear is like, Bruce Willis. He goes, I die harder than, Bruce Willis. Like, nobody was saying it. He goes, what? You don't know my shit? Die harder than Bruce Willis. And then he goes, and he jumps into the crowd. Someone snatches his chain. So now he is pissed. He gets downstairs, and someone, someone grabbed his chain. And Montreal is known for that. N'importe quoi. Vin était là. Vin, Vin peut vous dire. Vin was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? What's up? 514-411. Mr. Vin scam goodies. Love day, huh? Let's want to know shit. Lui? C'est le meilleur MC. Ok, c'est le meilleur MC qui avait pas dans le top. Je suis sûr qu'il l'a encore. You know, Vin, il rap, il fait des beats, il fait tout, puis il fait bien, man. Mais pour de vrai, à la base, c'est un artiste, un rappeur. Vin, ok, c'est un gars de l'Est, puis les gars de l'Ouest parlaient de lui, man. Il a formé combien de gars, man? Combien de gars ont des types? Des gars que maintenant qui font des beats pour vous, là. As far as the show element, Montreal a eu sa part de show. Man. As soon as the rap groups were coming in, uh, the major uh, rap groups from the states, it was all about who can open up for the groups. Le show de Track Back, j'avais fait avec le avec euh, Stratège dans le temps. Puis là, mais ce, ce qui était marquant dans ce show là, c'est que à la fin du show, Track Back il vient, il vient sur stage, il dit. Euh, Is there any MCs? And uh, yeah, he goes get on stage. So. I remember one cat got on stage and... Là, je me rappelle, moi j'étais déjà sur stage parce que j'ai regardé le show du stage. Puis là, euh, euh, qui qui était monté sur stage? Il y avait Orchid qui était monté. Now I get on the stage and I'm on stage rocking the mic with Craig Mack. Craig Mack, il se retourne. Il se retourne sur moi. Il me donne le micro. Là, je dis, get! Là, j'ai pas le choix, là. C'est comme gros pressure, là. C'est comme Flavor in your ears. C'était le record le plus hot dans le temps. Là, Craig Mack qui me donne le micro, man. là, je suis comme, get! Là, je commence à spit le shit. Je me rappelle un peu des paroles, mais la seule parole que je vais jamais oublier jusqu'à aujourd'hui, le. 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 Damn, man. I'm rapping with Craig Mack, you know what I mean? I'm not battling him, we're just, you know, rocking it. And the DJ switches another beat, and I'm writing the beat. So then Craig is like, what? Craig Mack's like, whoa, it's quick, it's So that was the catalyst of people to know, hey, we could do that. And then the Genius concert, when the Genius came down, there was a freestyle battle at the end again, and I was there. You know what I mean? And we were just torching, you know, people and just walking away. And it's funny because Craig, Craig Mack did the show, and this was like one week after the Biggie fiasco. I was supposed to open up for Biggie, and uh, whatever happened, you know, uh, I'm not sure. You'd have to ask Gary T, and Gary T would have to try to break it down to you more. But uh, Biggie has not passed the border. Yeah. Oh man! Apparently, he couldn't get to uh, pass the border, so they had to cancel it. Tout le monde a, tout le monde a tendu ce world. Everybody was there, everybody. And I remember people who didn't even want to, you know, didn't know hip-hop was calling me. I had, like, my father's friend's mother calling me and, yeah, I have two sons, uh, they want to go see Biggie. I'm like, I don't know you, lady. So I just remember doing sound check and then just finding out now that uh, he's not going to be there. Moi, je me rappelle, dans ce temps-là, il y avait Nublin, c'était Jean-Pierre qui animait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jean-Pierre et Alex. Jean-Pierre et Alex. Mais là, Jean-Pierre, il y avait du problème, c'est qu'il parlait pas bien anglais. Oh, pas bien anglais. Fait que là, maintenant, il y avait besoin de quelqu'un pour faire la traduction. Quand il faisait les interviews, fait qu'il m'emmenait pour faire les traductions. J'avais fait notre vague de route, comme ça avec lui. Puis euh, c'est ça, là, j'étais supposé faire l'interview avec Biggie. That was the beginning of like the no shows, you know what I mean? Like uh, a lot of shows that were supposed to come down uh, weren't coming down and that was going to start to hurt the hip hop in Montreal because we needed those to get the exposure. You know, today he's dead and it's like... It's like I'm going to refuse, I'm going to refuse, I'm going to refuse to meet people, you know? 
c'est comme ça, man. Ah ouais, Jean-Pierre puis Alex, c'est eux qui ont commencé Nuit Blanche, man. Dans le temps que Dice, Kitty, Katia et True Blue étaient tous des interns, you know, ils venaient de commencer à la radio. Dice B, man. Cabrus. Ah, mais une vétéran. 12 ans strong à Radio Centre-Ville, Nuit Blanche. Et non, c'était fat, man. Dans ce temps-là, c'était. C'était les débuts, mais c'était, c'était le bon vieux temps, mais Alex, man, il, il, yo, il était, c'était un gars qui était juste, mais il voyait les affaires, il, il, il essaie de venir amener un côté professionnel, il a donné à plein de monde, ouais. ce qui fait que si lui n'était pas passé à Montréal, là, peut-être qu'il y a des affaires qui ne seraient pas passées. Et Jean-Pierre a amené le côté sensationnalisme. Oh, man. Yeah. Jean-Pierre rêvait les, les, les potins, yeah. mettre le sel sur le... Ah, shit. <rire> il, il savait comment... Tu sais quand la, la, la plaie est ouverte, tu sais quand ah, où, où rentrer son doigt à la peau. <rire> you know, mais il aimait ça régler les affaires en onde. Ouais. Il adorait ça. Ouais. Fait que lui, il, a, il nous a tout, un, il a tout mis ça dans, dans notre sang là, comme les uns là. Comme, écoutez Nuit Blanche, là, il va peut-être avoir un ballon. Ou... Yo, c'était comme ça, man. À Nuit Blanche, Nuit Blanche t'es, Jean-Pierre et Alex, c'était une bonne tribune man, pour toutes les MC man, qui, qui voulaient se faire entendre là. C'était fun. Ouais, ouais, Après, il y a eu euh, le cachot, Bicycle, North Props, you ouais. know. Puis euh, Bicycle, lui, est venu avec un autre opté différent de Jean-Pierre et Alex. Puis il n'y avait pas de beef, man. You know? Les gars, man, sont, mm. ils, ils s'entendaient, mais il n'y avait pas de beef, man. Les gars, ils, ils, euh, Bicycle pouvait faire son shit, les gars pouvaient faire leur affaire. Il n'y yeah. avait pas de problème, man. Ouais. Pas de problème. Puis t'avais CQT que eux c'est les masters at work. Ouais. Pour de vrai là. Yeah. Les autres aussi, man, ils étaient tout le temps là, man. Puis et moi je me rappelle, j'écoute, j'écoutais le, le Masters at Work dans le temps que les gars n'arrêtaient pas de parler sur les tracks. Big up à Masters at Work, à eux parce qu'eux ils ont jamais bougé, ils ont toujours été là, ils ont leur formule, ils travaillent. Mike Machine, ils en venaient tout le temps là en train de parler là. Fait. Yo, ça c'est des émissions de radio, il y en a peut-être une ou deux, peut-être qu'on oublie là. Okay, well, three, definitely, because as for a, a, not a college radio or some little, you know I mean? I mean, the Native Brothers got our back, so big up to my brothers over there. Sérieux là, c'était pas mal, ouais, c'était pas c'était mal. Vraiment, là. Ça s'englobait vraiment là, le... C'était vraiment ça, le, ouais. le, le hip-hop montréalais. This is now considered... Uh, beginning of the golden age of Montreal hip hop. You had all these groups coming up and trying to, you know, trying to get to the next level. You know, it's evolved a lot. And know where hip hop came from and where hip hop has to go. 514411. <laughs> que tu seras aux états unis tu seras en Europe, ça n'aurait jamais marché. Les maisons de disques signent, signent, signent n'importe qui. Même. La question est, est-ce que tous ces groupes <rire> en 15 ans de hip-hop francophone québécois sont fat? Well, I see right now, there's two things happening. One is, since Quebec is fighting for its own identity, right? You know what I mean? And hip-hop is a good way for the youth to feel like they identify to something and develop something of their own. I think the industry is starting to accept hip-hop and push it, but I think they're choosing more artists that look more like them. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Whatever that means. The industry is accepting of what they want to accept as hip hop, but that ain't the real, real. You know what I'm saying? On the real, everybody knows what's going on on the real. You know I mean, there's cats I may have never stepped on stage. I mean, I get that much press, but everybody knows them. Y'en a, y'en a trop qui méritent qu'ils l'ont pas ou qu'ils l'ont pas eu encore. On voit les Américains, on voit les vieux, puis le monde sont oh wow, t'as vu, t'as vu nouveau ci, t'as vu nouveau ça, mais. À Montréal, c'est ça, on n'est pas arrivé à, à cette étape-là, tu comprends? Mais les artistes, ils ont un problème, tu comprends? Ils sont trop centrés sur leur, perso- leur personne à eux, puis au lieu de vendre un produit. Les cats doivent être plus égotistes. Ils doivent être prêts à travailler et networker avec les cats en Ottawa, Toronto. Je veux dire, le Canada est un grand place. Il a maintenant l'Internet. L'industrie, pour de vrai, là, tu comprends? C'est un produit que tu vends. Tu vois, je veux dire, mais c'est un spectacle, c'est un show, c'est un divertissement, tu comprends? Quand quelque chose est chaud, pousse-le. Tu sais ce que je veux dire? When something is hot in the States, they push it. People stop what they're doing to push it. Why? Because they know if that hot shit gets on, the whole fucking hood is known. Then there's the next hot shit and mediocre shit to come. But whatever's hot, you push it. 
that's what happened a lot of time with, with, with the promoters down here, the old school promoters and shit. You know what I mean? They see something hot, but unless it's on their plate, they don't want to push it because that might get over their head and they won't get bread off of it. But if they would have done it from, from the get-go, shit, man, there's a lot of people that could have popped from Montreal. Like, yo, it's the time to yo. Commence à faire notre propre style, man. Faut que les gars commencent à savoir c'est quoi Montréal, parce que c'est pas normal que yo. Montréal, on est carrément local, man. On va aller plus loin que ça, là, je veux dire, premièrement. Mais je pense que c'est surtout qu'on prend pas euh, les petits détails à la légère. Je pense que c'est ça qui fait une grosse différence. C'est que les gens, il y a plein de petits détails qui checkent pas. Ils il se présentent euh, pour les shows, ils que le son est pas bon, mais ils ont pas fait leur mic check. Euh, ils arrivent dans les sessions de photos, ben, ils sont pas prêts. Je veux dire, ils se sont même pas coupés les cheveux. Je veux dire, c'est wack. Pourquoi on, on mange pas de cette affaire-là? C'est qu'on n'est pas professionnel. Comment je veux dire, dans le sens où est-ce que, you know, on comprend pas un contrat, c'est un contrat. Ouais, euh, quand tu dois un show, il faut que tu te tiennes respectablement. On est encore « give me the beers », you know what I'm saying, « euh, Puis les shows aussi, il avait, y avait des problèmes, il y avait tout le temps des, des, des batailles dans les shows. Fait que quelle salle belle va louer un show à du monde qui vont se battre. Ils n'ont pas besoin de singes. Là, ils ne vont pas le faire, tu vois, je veux dire, parce que c'est leur nom, c'est leur image. Et c'est vraiment rien que ça. Back in the days, Back in the days, on était tous comme « Oh, fuck les majors, et, euh, fuck les radios, fuck ci, fuck ça, ils nous aiment pas. » It's not true. La vérité, c'est qu'ils te connaissent pas, puis ce qu'ils connaissent de toi, c'est les stéréotypes. Ils nous mettent des bâtons dans les coups. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Ils jouent pas les vidéos comme quand ils sont allés retirer les vidéos de King. On s'en fout qui est qu dans son vidéo. C'est pas le vidéo qui compte, c'était la musique qui compte. Ouais. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? So, le fait que, 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 que quelqu'un, que, que, que peu importe que ce soit la police qui soit allée, à musique plus, puis on va retirer le vidéo. Je trouve ça insensé, c'est de la musique. Quand Eric Lapointe s'est fait prendre avec l'héroïne au Mexique, on n'a pas fait ça. On n'a pas boycotté ses albums. Mm -hmm. Quand telle autre personne s'est fait arrêter pour telle chose, on n'a pas boycotté leur album. Pourquoi nous? This is my theory. OK? So you take it as, as you want. En ce moment, la game, c'est que back in the days, man, les gars, les, les pop, les rock, ils vendaient ça. Nous, on vendait ça. Même si on était pas pire, à part Dogmatic et les autres, à un moment donné. Mais en majorité, on vendait comme là. Maintenant que l'internet et tout le shit a tombé, notre ça est pas si pire maintenant. Là, they're looking at it like, hmm, if I could make a little 10 here, that could complement this little 20 or 30, this rock motherfucker that I'm spending so much money on, is making. Parce que lui, il rentre dans ce truc, il y a une petite band, ça me coûte un paquet d'argent, l'enregistrer. Parce que ce petit noir-là, il rentre là avec rien. <rire> il arrive avec sa gueule, son papier d'assiette. Fait que ça me coûte rien, dit avec lui. This is what this is. C'est quoi, là? C'est le I think we just need people to wake up in Montreal and put, be more open-minded to hip-hop because when you see a guy like me or a guy like SP doing, uh, SP did that McDonald commercial right here at Apollo Studio. When you see a guy like me doing cold shots, which is like 1.2 million of media placement, dog, done twice or three times. When you see this, it tells you right away, big corporation, you know, organizations fuck with hip hop. Everybody should witness that hip hop is a million dollar business right now. And that is like a real proof right there. Smoke, Sin, Sprite, and these people are fucking with hip hop. It's because they recognize that hip hop is the main thing. And I can tell you straight up, take it from me. Hip hop is really, I mean, what they look out for. Nowadays is the thing. Dancehall and hip hop on a publicity tip is ahead, is way ahead, so. Real hip hop people need to eat, so people in Montreal that are like in the top industry position, whether on radio, in the labels, need to take more risks. Ce qui se passe, c'est qu'ils veulent pas prendre de chance, pas essayer des, des, des styles nouveaux, des trucs comme ça, parce que ils, écoute, leur marge de profit, ben s'ils font un flop, ben c'est fini, tu sais, le label ferme ses portes. So. Faut, faut, faut qu'il y ait de l'argent qui rentre pour que les gens essayent des trucs, faut que l'argent rentre pour qu'ils essayent des nouveaux types de promos pour que. Le rap soit pas compétitif à l'intérieur du rap, mais soit compétitif à l'intérieur de la musique pour les Il y a les DJ aussi. Les DJ, tout ce qu'ils qu font, ils passent les beats américains. Yeah. Mais qu'est-ce que les autres, ils comprennent pas? Puis qu'est-ce que le public, quand ils achètent juste des albums américains, ils comprennent pas? C'est que c'est la même bouffe. Si moi, je mange, je sors un album, je mange, je, fais, je mets ça sur un 45 tours, 
le DJ arrive et passe ça dans le club, le monde me connaisse. Ben, mon deuxième album, mon premier album a vendu, mon deuxième album, ben, ce DJ là il va venir mixer sur mon album. Tu comprends so, Il va commencer à avoir des royalties, everything, tu comprends Mais quand le public là qui arrive, qu'ils achètent des Américains, des Américains, des Américains, mais l'argent là, ça sort du pays. Tu comprends sort du pays, l'argent reste pas ici. Il n'y a pas de promo pour, pour les MC. Le trois, les trois quarts des personnes qui rappent, c'est souvent des Haïtiens ben à Montréal. Fait que vu que le nom n'est pas si bon que ça pour les médias étrangers, fait que comment tu vas avoir de la pub à 100% pour l'artiste, c'est impossible. C'est impossible. Mais vous savez, ce qui est manqué, c'est que les gens ne peuvent pas... C'est l'impression que je n'ai pas, c'est que les gens n'ont pas l'initiative de pouvoir... Invest in their own projects to the point so that they get some quality shit. So then, if you're if my shit's too expensive at five hundred dollars, then I find that's pretty fucking cheap. I find that's fucking village de valeur prices when I look around everywhere else and I talk to everywhere everyone else. Yo, start injecting money, the money will come back around. It's one big circle. As long as we keep it everywhere inside Montreal, you can create our own economy within Montreal. On a essayé beaucoup de choses, tu sais. On a été avec une promo beaucoup plus agressive, tu sais. Je veux dire, euh, au niveau promotion, je veux dire, on a hit sur Télétoon, on a hit sur Music Plus, les autobus, euh, puis pas juste à Montréal, à Trois-Rivières, à Sherbrooke, à Longueuil, à Saint-Hubert, etc. Tu sais, on a acheté des pancartes. Je veux dire, euh, on essaye des trucs, tu sais, j'attends pas que quelqu'un l'ait like fait, puis genre, ah, c'est une bonne idée, je vais la refaire, tu sais, je veux dire, je me fais un petit plan de mon site, puis si je pense que c'est une bonne idée, j'y vais, puis en général, c'est ça qui est payant au niveau de la promo. Le fais... rap, ça rapporte pas, donc. Les gars, faites pas de tape, ça paye pas, you know what I'm saying? Real hustlers, real investors, real businessmen, take risk, and that's how you really, you know, quand tu oses, c'est là que tu touches, you know what I'm saying? Pour apprendre à ces jeunes comment faire une mise en marché, comment faire ce rap de merde, comment pas avoir la frousse. C'est difficile de les rejoindre, c'est deux milieux. On a le, 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 le urbain, le street comme on l'appelle, okay. puis après ça t'as le commercial, la masse. Puis la masse, elle vient pas nous voir, écoute pas Radio Centre-Ville. Tu vois, je veux dire, écoute pas les émissions urbaines, puis nous on pense rien que là. There is no main street. In Montreal, there's no, there's no commercial radio station, there's no urban There's no fucking urban radio station in Montreal. That's one of the major. You know what, you know what, eh? That's what I'm saying, no one has a job, you know what, you know what, that's a serious issue. Name the promoters we have in Montreal. We got, we got, we, we can even say it, we got Ricky D. <laughs> I'm gonna be paranoid. You know what I mean? Like, they all, our promoters that we have are all promoters that listen to hip hop that are doing hip hop. But Shahid could do a lot more for hip hop, you know? Yeah, but Shahid is in the system. Exactly, but. Shahid is in the system. When Shahid is coming to me, 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 c'est trop négatif, alors faut pas rendre la chose encore plus négatif. Shahid's word is good until he goes against the grain. When he goes against the grain, then it's Shahid, what do you do? Don't get black on me. On est, on est encore au niveau où est-ce que, you know, run, nigga, run, run, nigga, run. On est encore à ce niveau-là, man. Encore au niveau où est-ce que, you know, c'est nous qui font tout le travail et c'est qui connaissent. Mais ils veulent pas nous laisser faire de code, non. We had an event the other day, and even the dude from Music Plus said, okay, you know, I can play your music videos 24-7, but if there's no urban radio to support, the, he has no, um, he has no mandate, he has no, uh, he, he can't, he can't, to his superiors, he can't go to his superiors and say, the reason why I'm playing these guys is because Flo or MYZFM is playing uh, Gundy's track or Butter Baby's track. What, what is going on? Honestly, a lot of people hate on Shahid. I'm not the biggest fan of Shahid, you know what I mean? But he's in the system, he's doing well, what, but you know what I mean? He's staying stuck in the system. Yeah, That's he's staying stuck in the system, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you gotta try to get past the system in order to elevate, you know? Yeah, or you gotta quit. The scene is a little bit disjointed because of the, uh, the language too. As beautiful as having two languages makes the city more diverse at the same time, it fractures the scene a bit because When French groups blow up, they go through a different circuit than when English groups blow up. La différence entre l'album, faire un album en anglais et faire un album en français ici au Québec, c'est un monde. 
c'est un monde. C'est comme, yo, quand on a, quand on a changé en français, là, c'est là qu'ils sont réveillés qu'on existait. Puis, yo, on a fait, on a fait six, six vidéos avant ça, là. C'est là qu'ils sont réveillés qu'on existait, là. À Musique Plus, là, 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 ça, c'est juste ça, tout le monde est pour le monde, c'est parce que ça m'a choqué, man. À Musique Plus, quand on est arrivé avec la première vidéo, qui est le retour, quand on est arrivé avec ça, man, il a, il a joué en rotation, les autres capotaient parce qu'on avait mis Mado. C'est hein, hein. hein, on a mis Mado à la mode dans la vidéo, les autres capotaient, you know. Là, ils, ils sont arrivés carrément et ils nous ont dit euh, Comment qu'on prononce votre nom On est en train de parier sur comment, la prono comment prononcer le nom de votre groupe. Six vidéos déjà, man. Ça, je dis. English groups like us have been forced to have to go to Toronto, Vancouver, where, what have you, cross to the States to try to get some names. Sauf que. Toronto, tout comme ici, ils défendent leur territoire. Fait que les gars de Toronto, ils laissent pas le monde d'ailleurs, de, 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 Toronto passer aussi bien. Euh... Tu vois, je veux dire, et ça, bah, le baby, ils vont te le dire, offside, ils vont te le dire, ils vont tout te le dire. Ils jouent, ils jouent à Much Vibe, ils jouent à MTV même. Tu sais, on a même joué à MTV aussi. MTV euh, fucking euh, Toronto, là. On joue à MTV, MTV Canada, qui s'appelle. On joue là, mais ils vendent pas là-bas. To do stuff in Toronto, you gotta have money to get down to Toronto to lobby because you're head and head with people like Cardi and the rest of them, a lot of other talented cats, and you're out of the city trying to do things on their turf. So it's real difficult. It's real difficult. Quand je dis, yo, les gars en anglais ici, man, ils peuvent être plus broke que ça, man. Swear to God. So you hate that? Les gars ils cock block, man. C'est du cock blocking qu'ils font. Là bas, normalement. Normalement, puis euh, au fond, c'est la guerre, man. parce que rappelle-toi, avant à New York, c'était comme ça aussi. Man. Si tu n'es pas de New York, tu ne jouais pas. Man. The Roots avait de la misère à jouer. Tu, tu, yo, Philly ne marchait pas, il n'y a personne qui jouait. Si tu n'es pas de New York, ça ne marchait pas. I'm sorry about you cats, and I'm this in Toronto. I don't give a damn, because y'all got, you guys are hogging the TV stations, hogging the videos and shit. We got mad videos out here, and they all just French sheets. We got English cats too, and I don't be seeing you on much music, bastards. I heard it's $45 every time your video play, bastards. I heard it's the same people that give the grants, that fucking choose what videos get played, you know what I'm saying, and control the DJ, you bastards. It's a mafia, and you guys ain't selling shit. We got no name rappers in Quebec rapping in French, and we only sell in Quebec, and I'll sell you Punk ass motherfuckers, you ain't got no image. Vous allez pas m'aimer parce que je veux dire, la scène est whack. Tout simplement whack au point tel que il y a quelques années ici on contrôlait encore c'était quoi la hip hop Montréal, hip hop au Québec c'était ici à Montréal. Maintenant la scène en tant que telle a déménagé à Québec parce qu'ici tout le monde est de groupe à d'autres groupes, ça hate, ça dit que si, ça dit que ça, ça veut marcher sur la tête de l'autre pour arriver. Là-bas encore, ils sont tous solidaires, puis ça bouge. Il y a la radio, il y a les shows, le monde supporte, le monde se déplace. Et voilà, ils supportent le mouvement. Puis ici, ben, il va falloir qu'on se réveille parce que franchement, il y a des choses qui ont besoin de changer. Il y a des personnes qui ont besoin de penser d'autres façons. Et puis voilà, quoi, tu vois. Mais il faut, faut y mettre le travail, le cœur. L'argent ne va pas venir automatiquement comme ça, quoi, tu vois. Mais sinon... La scène m'a montré du love, j'ai du love pour la scène. Mais en ce moment, moi et la scène, on est fâchés. On est sérieusement fâchés parce qu'il faut que les choses changent. Tu vois, c'est pas parce qu'il y a 50 l'autre côté, euh, New York, que c'est à côté qu'il faut automatiquement faire la même chose. Il y a 20 ans, le monde disait on est 10 ans en retard sur les Américains. Ok, ça c'était cool dans ce temps-là, c'était pas peu, c'est acceptable. Mais qu'est-ce que j'ai remarqué C'est qu'à chaque année, on fait un pas en retard. cest au lieu d'arriver et être 9 ans en retard, 8 ans en retard, ou bien de rester à 8 ans, ben. On est 11 ans en retard, 12 ans en retard, 13 ans en retard. Il y avait un dicton, man, dans la rue, quelqu'un a inventé ça, il a dit Le monde de Montréal imite New York, Québec imite Montréal, il est en descendant, descendant. Yo, c'est laid, oui, man. Pour le record, tu penses, c'est laid pour l'hip-hop québécois, là. Comme ça, on est des imitateurs, maintenant. Man. Il va changer ça. Il n'arrive pas, le roi est mort, on est ici, non, mais encore. Si le mélange avec l'enseignement américain n'est pas accru dans ta sauce, tu marches perdu car c'est leur merde. Ce rap de merde est la merde de 
les jeunes esclaves américains qui sont nous, mais ils l'ont développé. J'ai passé la majorité de ma vie à analyser la game américaine. Now I'm like, fuck that. That's not where it's at. Le shit aux États-Unis, c'est shit aux États-Unis. Moi, quelqu'un à Brooklyn n'a rien à m'apprendre, quelqu'un à LA n'a rien à m'apprendre. J'ai vécu toute ma vie à Montréal. On connaît le shit, le shit, il est live. That's one thing I give Montreal, we grimy as hell. You believe that? We get in your face and tell you you whack, nigga. Yeah, 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 what the deal? This is your man LB in the place to be representing the C click, baby. No doubt. Listen, man, the only thing I gotta say, you know, about this rap game is that. This rap game is kind of lame. This game is full of bullshit. It's bullshit. Why? Because the whack people get all the the promo, the publicity, the uh, emphasis. They get the spotlight. You know, I don't knock people who work, who do their thing. You know, I don't knock people who work hard or whatever they do. But if it's whack. It's whack, man. That's my opinion. That's how I see this game. I think that ever since gangsterism took over hip hop. That's what people look at right now, yeah, man? So it's not based on skills anymore. Back in the days, everybody was different. To be a rapper, you had to be like, damn, how they think of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Rock him, the god, he come out with some spaced out mathematics, 5% stuff, and people was like, how you come out with that? You had to read books to keep up with these cats. As a matter of respect, and also as a matter of uh, sensitivity, I think that, you know, in the hip-hop circle, we're very sensitive, so we don't take criticism, you know, in a positive way. I mean, sometimes, too, it's not dish out in a constructive way, so therefore, I plead a fifth on that one. You know, but to me, there's too many wack dudes out there, you know what I'm saying? That's all I gotta say, you know what I mean? You know, straight up, I'm not I'm not dissing, I'm just saying, you know, we need to step up our games. Like, wack dude know who he is. If you don't know, then you're stupid. Montréal, qu'est-ce qui se passe, je vais vous dire sérieusement, c'est quoi le gros problème, c'est que... C'est vrai qu'il y a du talent, il y a du monde qui lyric, lyrically qui sont forts ou whatever, mais il y a d'autres places qui regardent, pour une vue internationale, qui regardent Montréal. Eux autres, ils se la pètent, ils viennent, puis tu comprends, ils nous montrent leurs projects ou whatever, ils nous montrent qu'est-ce qui se passe vraiment, parce que la rue, ça vient, le, le rap, ça vient de cette essence-là de la rue, tu vois ce que je veux dire? Moi, je viens de l'école de Grandmaster Flash ou whatever, c'est ça qui, c'est ça qui, 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 qui m'accrochait, tu vois, au rap au début, Eric B. and Rakim, ces affaires-là ou whatever, tu vois ce que je veux dire? Ça fait que quand les Français, ils regardent qu'est-ce qui se passe à Montréal, on dirait du rap de bonbon. Il faut une certaine crédibilité, man, il faut une petite crap, you know? Les, les, les gars comme, comme, euh... Euh, c'est quoi le nom, man? Du rap politique. Euh, qui sont? Loco Locas. Des affaires de 8-3. Des affaires de. Puis deuxièmement, les rappeurs qui. C'était un black. Tu comprends que je veux dire? T'étais dans le street. En tout cas, quand je te parlais back then, tu parlais bien normalement. Puis maintenant, tu rappes joual. Ils ont de la misère à respecter. Fait qu'avant qu'ils puissent monter à ce stade-là, puis qu'ils puissent écouter ce rap de bonbons-là puissent l'apprécier pour sa forme pure, il faut qu'on leur montre qu'à Montréal, en réalité, pareil, il se passe des affaires, c'est moi ce que je veux dire, puis se passer des affaires, c'est pas des, des conneries. Donc, euh, les nouveaux groupes sont... Bon, ok, ils font leur musique, tu sais, c'est bon pour eux. <rire> Mais c est, c est... Ça, relie, ça me relie pas, ça relie pas le monde que je connais. C'est sûr qu'il y a encore du travail à faire, mais je veux dire, il y a beaucoup plus de, de, de bons produits qui sortent, puis ça fait du bien pour tout le monde, non, je veux dire, tu fais du rap, tu es dans un gang, Back in the days, you couldn't put up a tag, you couldn't get on stage, you couldn't do nothing unless you got respect on the street first. You get what I'm saying? Il faut que les gars de ton level aiment ton shit. Il faut qu'ils te respectent aussi un peu, man. Parce que yo, si si t'as pas de support là, man, oublie ça, man. Tu t'en vas nulle part. Tu viens pas te faire des amis dans le game, man. T'es supposé d'en avoir des chances. At least your hood gotta know you. We got cats in Montreal right now that's backed up by all kinds of people. Got tracks with all kinds of people. But who you repping? You know what I'm saying? They want to talk about their freestyle battle and battle all that. Who you battle in your own city? That's the whole thing. Do you get love? That's the whole thing. Yeah, man. Or do, or do you, yeah, man? Or, 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 are you afraid? You know what I'm saying? When you walk around, do you need bodyguards? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody paid like that in Montreal to need no bodyguards. You know what I'm saying? One time I had a, a fat head friend of mine. Anyways, I don't say he's a fathead friend, but at the time his head was swole because his album was coming out, you know what I mean? And he, he had to humble himself and tell me that because he went and spoke to somebody and said, yeah, who's the baddest rapper in Montreal? And he sat there waiting for his name to come up. And she said, my name. She said, misery. <laughs> he goes, what? She goes, my grandmama know that nigga. You know what I'm saying? 
my little sister know that nigga, because I do talent shows. They even rap at daycares, dog. You know what I'm saying? I did it all. So that's really what it is, is how much people know you. You know what I'm saying? Because really, in the hood, there's those that are heads and those that are support you. But really and truly, the people that buy records don't look like me and you. J'ai beaucoup j'ai beaucoup de discussions du monde au sujet de Loco Locas, right? Parce que j'ai travaillé sur le, le, le leur, leur, leur street euh, rap crédible. Quand quand il allait sortir l'album, ils m'ont engagé. La compagnie m'a appelé pour euh, les faire connaître dans le street parce qu'ils savaient qu'ils avaient un problème de street credibility. Du hip hop après tout, right? Ils sont puis là, là nous on était comme mes gars étaient comme mais why do they even give a fuck? Ils ont je dis les gars ils ont quand même avant cet album là le premier album ils ont quand même vendu un bon 10, 15. So why do they want to come to the street now? Tu vois, je dis ce que les gars me disaient. Je suis comme, oui, c'est vrai, mais regarde, si tu regardes, le street vend quand même. Comme si tu veux regarder les, 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 les SP, admettons, ils ont quand même un petit 30, un petit 20, euh, fucking euh, 8, 3, avec quand même fait un 15, 20. Tu vois, je dis, fait, si les autres ont fait 10 avant, ils font un petit 10 avec le street, ça fait quoi? Oh, tu vois? Comment, c'est la logique pour eux, là. Ils disent, ok, on va faire ce qu'on fait pour eux autres, mais en même temps, on va voir s'il y a moyen qu'on peut ramasser un petit coffre dans la rue aussi. Au fond, les gars font du rap. Fait que les autres veulent ramasser l'argent partout. Respect that, that makes sense. Ça, c'est pas locaux, là. Je te parle de la compagnie. Fait que la compagnie m'appelle, les locaux parlent un speech, la compagnie parle un autre. C'est normal, la compagnie parle d'argent. Ils sont collés, c'est ton affaire artistique, ils parlent d'argent. Tu vois? Les gars, eux, ils sont comme, moi, j'aime le rap, j'aime le rap, j'aime le rap, j'aime le speech, j'aime ci, j'aime ça. Je connais, il y a des gars, voilà. <rire> Puis là, là, ce que je les ai là-dedans, c'est que là, eux autres, ils, ils, ont, ils, ont, ils ont vraiment travaillé pour créer leur image. Fait que là, les gars, sont, les gars me parlent de « Oh, you know, uh, loco, c'est pas du rap, loco. » Après ça, je te dis, une fois que c'est sorti, bye. You know, niggas are hating. « Oh, loco, c'est pas du rap. » I'm like, look, si tu regardes la chose, dans la, si tu connais ton rap, tu vas te rendre compte que loco est probablement plus rap que a lot of your niggas are hating. Je vais t'expliquer pourquoi. Les gars, ils sont quoi? Ils sont politiques. Ils sont politiques pour le pays. What they rap about is what's going on here. What you rap about is what's going on in the States. And what you think you see in your neighborhood. They rap about the politics of the country. They talk about what's going on in their people. For their people. That's public enemy right there. So I'm saying, that's what hip hop used to be. About revolution, man. Changing shit. You have to do something. That's what they talk about. So they're more rap than all of you. They're trying to talk about, oh, you know what I'm saying? My car, my chain, my shit. Which you don't have. Oh, yeah. now rocking yeah. with your boy Dexter D. Hip hop is you. You'll never, I won't say you'll never catch me with a name brand. But I ain't got to wear no name brand to be hip hop. These cats gotta go buy Sean John, Fubu, whatever, whatever. They think that's what makes them hip hop. I wear a pair of no name pants, no name shoes, and I'm hip hop. J'ai un gros message à passer à tous les, à tous les rappers, à tous les MC en ce moment qui rap, qui aspire à, à monter dans le game. Il reste real, tu comprends? Reste real. C'est pour ça que je te dis que je n'ai pas quest ce que Acrophone ou Damien ils font. Ils font qu'est-ce qu'ils font. Ils font pas qu'est-ce que je fais, mais ils font qu'est-ce qu'ils font. Pour moi, eux, ils restent real. Mais je, bon, je suis le pas qu'est-ce parce que je peux pas me relier à eux. Mais si tu veux rentrer dans le game, reste real, man. Ouvre, le, ouvre les portes. Right now, I think Montreal, on the industry level, sans some fake shit, I think it's like that everywhere, basically, you know what I mean? Pas s'entendre de voir devant le micro, mais il y a moyen de faire autre chose derrière, complémenter cet argent-là, man. One. Tu fais, tu fais, tu vends quelques disques, tu fais un petit change, tu fais quelque chose, tu me changes, mais si tu fais autre chose. Il y a des bons gars de la relève, man. Il y a des bons gars, man, qui, qui s'en viennent. Pas tous, man. Il y en a qui sont ignorants, man. Les gars, man, parlez mieux que ça, man. Comme si ils apprenaient à vous exprimer parce que. Yo, quand je vous entends parler dans le boss, là, puis en plus, vous dites que vous êtes des rappeurs, là, moi, là, j'ai, j'ai comment va, là, les, les rappeurs comme ça, là. Ça a pas venu d'hier, là. Tu sais, ça fait 12 ans, là. Pas hier, là, je suis né, là. Pas né hier. Pas né hier, pis si, pas capable de rapper depuis hier. Ça fait des années, man, tu oublies jamais ça, man. Tu sais, c'est pas, du, c'est pas des trucs de magie, là, où tu peux euh, arrêter ta job, puis commencer à rapper, puis faire un emploi de, de ça, là. C'est pas parce que mon oncle Jean-Guy trouve ça fat dans ton salon de Noël, là, que ça veut dire que t'es capable de faire ça comme un pro, tu sais. Bon, y'en a assez de rapper. Maintenant, on a besoin du monde qui font de la gérance, Du monde qui vont s'occuper de, 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 des médias, tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Il faut beaucoup de personnes autour de toi pour avoir une vraie business. I think we still lack a little experience on a business tip. We need managers, we need real show bookers, people that like, you know, fill up their fridges. 
you know, that eat, survive by booking artists, not just promoters, you know, agents and all that kind of stuff. We like in this. For an example, those shows in that state, to manage your basket. Come say, you're not manager. You're not manager of the team. You're not the owner of the team black. You're not. That's the one thing. basket. One, it's now that you're not the black owned team. Son, Jay is the first to buy a big part in a team. Jay Z? No problem. A lot has happened. I mean, the French scene came from absolutely nothing to something. You know, um, I would have loved to have seen a little bit more happen in the English scene. A few crews have been able to break through and release videos, but you know, we, we really haven't. Oh, we've had some successes. You know, you have your A track, your DJ A track, DJ for Kanye West and all kinds of shit now on Common's album. So yeah, Montreal has done some dope shit. Yeah, we need some managers. I think some of these rappers that never really made it. You know what I'm saying? Some rappers, I love them. I ain't gonna call no names. But they'd be better as a manager or something else because they have so much knowledge of the game than they would be as MCs. I understand everybody wanted to be spotlight. On n'aimera pas de nom, là. Vous n'avez pas nommé de nom? Non, moi, je vais pas nommer de nom. Tout ce que j'ai à dire, c'est... Comme là, qu'on est en train de faire, là, je garantis qu'il y a au moins 50% du monde qui quitte, man. T'es un producer, t'es un MC. Va-t'en chez vous, man. Va tourner des boulettes, retourne à l'école, fais quelque chose. Des Chris. Ça, c'est S.O.M. Monde qui a dit ça. C'est qui a dit du monde méchant, Montréal, le gros. Non, mais regarde, regarde. Non, non, non. Je t'ai qu'un rien, G. Il y a trop de monde qui font du gros shit de caca, man. Des chaînes à 9 piastres. Des chaînes à 9 piastres. Je veux pas de pub dans les clubs. Moi, je vois juste des fake Mac. Juste des fake Mac. Je vous dis faux bling bling, puis des chaînes à 9 piastres. Pas des chaînes à 9 piastres. Pas des chaînes à 9 piastres. Il y a plein de jeunes qui arrivent. Le monde commence à réaliser, c'est beaucoup de travail. C'est pas juste les rhymes, man. You know, yo, tout le monde peut drop des rhymes, you know, puis avoir un petit flow, man. C'est pas facile de faire un album, man. Un classique, là, ça prend pas euh, deux semaines. Là. You know what I mean? It's the real deal. There's nowhere like Montreal to discover yourself as an artist. When it's time to market yourself, though, I don't know about that. Music, I do for me. You know, music, I do for, for, for people around me. But the music business, you don't, you, you don't do for anybody other than fucking dividends. It's all about getting it into the system and out for as much as, you know what I mean? For as much as you can get it. It's in 2005, man. It's been quite, it's been quite, it's been 20 years que, que ça roule et tout ça. A lot of you cats are sleeping. There's artists out there. I'm telling you guys are sleeping. I was the dirtiest rapper. I used to do like two, three shows a night, dog. I had my ears on every radio station. I spoke to every promoter, kissed ass, hand out flyers. That used to be my game. I used to walk up, yo, Ricky D, what's up? Take half his stack of flyers and hand them out. They give me a chance to politic with the people. Give me a chance to holler at some females uh, under some false pretense, you yeah, know what Yeah, I went out into the streets and the metros and played and played and played and played. And played. To have thousands of people see me, not do anything about it, but just see me. So that way when I pop up, all those, I call them sleepers. Because they'll be like, fuck, I remember him from the Metro. Oh, fuck, I remember him from the Rave. Oh, fuck, poetry show, fashion show. I do comedy shows, I used to do cultural shows. I didn't limit myself to hip-hop shows. I did competitions. I did it all. Anywhere I could be exposed, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. I was there, you know what I'm saying? Any TV shows I could get on, I try to get on. Any radio shows, that's the whole thing. These cats expect the game to come and get you. You gotta saturate the game. Faut que ça soit une vraie business. Yeah. Faut pas que ça soit une joke. Comme le monde, le public pense que quand on rap, oh, c'est des jeunes qui, qui, qui font ça pour s'amuser ou qui sont pas sérieux ou bien. No. Whatever. Non, man. Dans notre tête pour nous, là, c'est une business, man. Puis on est sérieux, man. C'est une carrière. Puis on a travaillé longtemps. Man. Moi, je suis le plus jeune dans mon groupe. Ça fait 10 ans que je suis dans cette game. You know what I'm saying? Les gars qui sont plus vieux, il y a des cas, ça fait. Pff, ça fait 12 ans, man. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Je pense pas après 12 ans dans une game, t'as envie de niaiser, puis de dire, oh, je fais ça pour le love, whatever, là. Ça fait 12 ans que je suis à la radio. Ça fait pas 12 ans que je suis dans la game, ça fait 12 ans que je suis dans la radio. J'ai sorti un des premiers albums indépendants, euh, back in the early 90s, ok? J'ai fait, I paid my motherfucking dues. <laughs> You're an MC, you got rhymes? All right. Have songs. You got songs? Oh yeah, you have songs. If you're a real MC, you'll have a demo. We did the demo thing, and then it goes. Now you know. After that, you can't you can't make demos for five or six years straight. You got to start getting to the next level. So now people are starting to see growth. We're going from the ground up. Hip hop has never been accepted. The media never never wanted to take. The industry didn't like us until they saw we was making money without them. So that's what I'm saying. Fuck the industry, anyways. Make our money, and then when they want to talk, they want to talk big chips. Know that. Cause we gon' lock it down. 
2005 and on, people are gonna start to get hurt. You know what I mean? So promoters, investors, people who own, you know, the the labels and fucking the TV stations and Music Plus and all them cats. It's not no threats. It's just that the kids are gonna be real with y'all. You know what I mean? And everybody goes home at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So let's work this music. Impliquez-vous dans quelque chose, man. Parce que dans le hip hop, il y a de l'aspect, il y a, la, y a pas l'aspect musical seulement. Il y, a, il y a l'aspect business, tu peux prendre soin d'une maison de production, tu peux, faire, tu, tu peux, tu, tu peux, tu peux ouvrir des, 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 pour dupliquer les CD, tu peux, tu, peux, tu peux devenir manager, tu peux faire des spectacles comme, comme, comme les gars de Ground Up ils font, tu peux faire des DVD. Yo, il y a plein de choses que tu peux faire. Puis le plus que tu fais, le plus que ça ouvre des portes à tout le monde pour comprendre qu'on peut tout manger là-dedans. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Il y a même les streetings. Yo, there's a whole lot to do, man. Il faut arrêter de niaiser et penser que... Yo, la maison de disque, elle va régler ça. Moi, même moi, si je avec une maison de disque, the best to know. Je duplicate mon own shit and I'm selling out the chunk of my car. We gotta change Montreal. You know what I mean? Faut mieux commencer là puis se parce que le mouvement se fait là. Far one for real city. You know what I'm saying? In Quebec, we nasty. We don't like nobody. You know what I'm saying? So we don't give a fuck. We say what we want. That's why I can be conscious to say the shit I want to say. That's why I love Quebec. I ain't kiss nobody's ass. We don't need no industry. You know what I'm We selling records, nigga. <laughs> I ain't signed. I ain't sold nothing yet, nigga. But you better pray I never do get signed. You know what I mean? Because I ain't afraid to call no names. Put me in the game and y'all in danger. You know what I'm saying? Tous les Cinq, un, un négro là en réseau. <rire> Moi, c'est ma porte de sortie, puis c'est la porte de sortie à plusieurs personnes qui sont dans la rue. Non? C'est important pour eux de réussir dans ça. C'est important pour moi de réussir dans ça. Faut que tu vends un rêve, faut que tu vends quelque chose. Faut que le monde ait envie de t'écouter. Faut que le monde il dise Oh yeah, j'ai vu son vidéo. Oh yeah, c'est frais, c'est frais, c'est frais. Tu comprends Est-ce que tous ces groupes en 15 ans de hip-hop francophone québécois sont fans Est-ce que c'est, c'est impossible C'est logiquement impossible. On va regarder là, une à une. This is a bad news prediction. I don't know if y'all are feeling it, but Montreal is getting very serious, especially with the music business. We're gonna have gangster rap come through. And gangster rap, it gets on the news. You see what I'm saying? It's not about the music plus at that point, and then music plus is out the equation because from the news is on the shit. Fuck you, you know what I mean? Tu peux pas le temps de faire du bif à Montréal, tabarnak, mais on peut même pas fucking se faire une vidéo clip avec budget, même yo. Fuck, fuck that bif, shit, bro. Real, man. Mm-hmm. Yo, si vous avez du bif, you know, le bif il peut se régler. Mais faites-le pas pour impressionner un autre. Parce que de manière, commence par te faire une vidéo clip avec budget, puis là tu viendras te parler, tu parles, parler, parler de bif, ma belle. Quand je vois quelque chose au niveau du crowd, parce que là il est en train de se passer quelque chose d'énorme au niveau du game inside, à, à l'intérieur du game lui-même, les artistes, les labels, les, les promoteurs, euh, les gens font de plus en plus du bon truc, de plus en plus ils réalisent qu'il faut qu'ils soient professionnels dans le truc, sauf que le crowd lui-même n'a pas encore euh, fait cette, cette upgrade-là, dans le sens autant que ce soit présence dans les spectacles à certains moments, ou que ce soit de, de, de faire la différence en quand ce qui vaut la peine d'être écouté, puis ce qui est de qualité, puis de ce qui ne l'est pas non plus. Moi, personnellement, je trouve ça cool de voir les artistes américains débarquer à Montréal. Ça fait, ça fait quelque chose de vraiment nice, sauf que quand tu dis qu'il y a 2-3 000, 000 spectateurs dans un, dans un truc parce qu'il y a un artiste américain, puis que là, on se retrouve, nous, à faire un spectacle dans un endroit, disons à Montréal, on se retrouve avec 200-300 personnes. OK, c'est sûr que 200-300 personnes, c'est cool, sauf que les gens, euh, ils n'arrivent pas nécessairement à, à cerner le, le fait que le produit vient d'ici. C'est quelque chose de plus près d'eux. Donc, il devrait être plus en mesure de réagir de cette façon-là par rapport à ça, puis donner un, un, un bon pushing, donner un bon retour. Des fois, les crowds sont juste veg, ils dorment, puis je veux dire, les groupes sont plus hype que le crowd. Dans le fond, c'est supposé être le contraire un peu, tu comprends ce que je veux dire? MCs will get on stage and say, why is the crowd not getting live? The crowd is not supposed to get live. They didn't pay money. You didn't pay money to see them. They paid money to see you. You give them positive energy, they're going to give you positive energy back. It's just like when, when somebody walks in a room and they smile, automatically people want to smile too. It's the same thing. Transfer of energy. That's things to grow on. What I got to say about the game right now is that what we got to do is just put out a lot of music because the way they're doing it now and over the border, they're making money off of mixtapes. So if you think you're going to make money off of getting to a big label, it's not going to happen. À la radio, comme il n'y a pas de support, 
it has to be in the streets, tu comprends? Comme les, les compagnies ne veulent pas signer les artistes, ou ils veulent jouer par nous autres même. Il va falloir faire de la pression, on dit, on est sur la street. Pour faire grossir le porte-monnaie. C'est un gros boom qui va se faire. Un gros boom qui va se faire, pas juste un artiste là. Round up, hose down. Donc là, moi et ta femme, on se collait. Ça, c'est mon type que t'embrasses. On garde nos pieds à terre, you know what I'm Stay connected to the streets. Comme ça, tu sais. On est toujours, tu sais. On est toujours focus. Montréal, c'est toujours un petit peu, on suit. Au niveau des téléséries, on suit la France. Au niveau des States, on suit le, le format des States. Mais on peut avoir notre musique, notre identité et faire nos moves. Faire que le monde suive Montréal. Moi, c'est ce que j'aimerais voir. At least that's what I'm working for, be you. I ain't trying to follow nobody. I do everything I love. Je t'en crée, ce man. Puis le quatrième motherfucking album, il s'en vient en tabarnak. Puis checker pour le tape, sortie de prison, volume 1. Ça, c'est real, man. La scène doit changer. Et les gars comme le Roi Enoch ont besoin de se faire sucer quelque part d'autre qu'à Montréal. Straight the fuck up. Touché à ma mère. On vous régularisera. Tu m'en bats la rage, j'ai pas peur là. Whatever. Yeah, I gotta give love to my man Enoch. <laughs> Being grimy. <laughs> I love the shit you do, it, dog. Yeah, I mean, I know people's hating on you, but I think much on these that kind of excitement. We Whatever. need to scare some of these fake motherfuckers out the game. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want to do it, then do that, dog. I'm all for it. I mean, I got a warrior spirit. I believe that anybody who deserves to be anywhere. It's gonna stand their ground, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the whole thing, okay? I mean, plus whatever, dog. You know, I got your back. <laughs> you wildin' though. <laughs> People gotta be straight up. If you have a friend who raps, if you're not in the rap game right now and you're listening to this, and you have a friend who raps, and you find that his shit is whack, tell the motherfucker. The motherfucker will go on you throughout his whole life thinking he's the shit and he's whack. And everybody out there that's doing good work, support them. All right? God bless you. And don't be stupid out there and kill each other. You feel me? Yeah. All I gotta say is to Mount Real, Mount Real, keep it real, keep doing art for the real reasons, um, and just perfect your art and keep working with it. And because because you have people saying that you know you can't do it doesn't mean that you have some much of artists that have grown up and gone out there and done great things, and that means it could even go even further next time. So never give up on that dream and just keep doing it, Mount Real, keep it real, Mount Real. Yo, just keep it creative, man. Just get open on the shit that you're doing. Just get into what you're doing. Just Make your skills better, man. Just practice your shit, man. Just hone your skills. Just develop. Just develop. Just develop yourself. Develop what you know you got. And just don't let no one tell you nothing. Get into your space. Zone the fuck out. And when you come back, drop it on the ass. And that's it. Au moins, il y a du monde qui se décourage. Puis, à un moment donné, il va juste rester juste du bon stop. Les grosses compagnies, là, comme. Faites du rap, t'es quand et tout, c'est bien fun, mais pourquoi vous n'engagez pas des gars comme nous même pour venir faire vos affaires? Mm. Pourquoi vous engagez des paquets de clowns qui savent pas qu'est-ce qu'ils font? Yo. Moi là, je serais frais et dispo là, pour ah. booster votre shit. Yo, depuis. Ah, sortez la palette, puis moi je suis down. Depuis... Vous allez avoir de la qualité et de la quantité en plus, même. That's it. Engagez du monde qui savent tout faire les affaires. Speed. Arrêtez de mettre des, des clowns qui sont arrivés la semaine passée, puis après ça, boum, ils se déclarent comme yeah, hip hop, ils se foutent leur casquette à l'envers. Puis ils pourraient même pas chanter Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous au complet. Speed. Ils pourraient même pas chanter Pain. C'est que 4, 4, 1. Le game à Montréal, c'est quoi de ce qu'est-ce qu'il manque le bloc B. <rire> Sérieusement, il manque le bloc B. Il y a plein de, de, de jeunes talents. Mais là, c'est sûr que les jeunes talents, il faut que tu les moules. Fine. Pour les mouler, il faut que tu sois placé. Parce que le petit tu pas. Moi, ça me le dit, le petit cul, man, you know, il fait son hustle quand tu arrives, on hein, oh, bosse toujours. Il ne t'écoute pas. Moi, ça me le dit, c'est comme, you know, what you gonna tell me? Il ain't got shit. Quand je dis, il faut qu'on arrive comme, comme fucking Corneille. <rire> What? Tu penses que le petit cul va pas écouter Corneille maintenant? Quand Corneille va dire, check, mon chum, look what I got. Il faut de l'argent dans le fond, si on va je dire, parce que shit, ça coûte cher, man, puis se payer des vidéos, puis se payer de la promotion, la promotion parfaite, tout ça, mais somme s'il y aurait un peu d'argent. Il y aurait de l'argent investi là-dessus, sur une station de radio, 24 heures, quelque chose. Non, je veux dire, des choses comme ça, man. 
truc, ça, ça fait chier, tu sais, on ne peut pas avancer. Puis on a, on a tellement bourré de talent, c'est sûr qu'il y en a plein qui sont pas bons. Mais il oh, y en a plein qui sont bons aussi, là, puis qui sont capables de sortir. Yo, oh, c'est 5 1 4 qu'est-ce que tu penses? 5 1 4 4 1 1 Shout out, you know what I'm saying? Tout le monde dans scène hip-hop, you know what I mean, qui supporte. You know what I mean? Tous les clubs, tous les MCs. Tous les gars, man, qui sont là, ça fait longtemps, man. You know who you are, and I'm saying. Five one four four one one, go get it. On s'en fout, on s'en fout les gars. Pour la get mon money, il faut du corps dans la banque, négro basse comme la veille. Tous les necks sont grands, go, 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 go. Pour péter, on s'en fout, on s'en fout les gars. C'est la cité des cockblocks Les gars slip comme des fuck Le pop vite quand ils nous spot Y'a des filles qui veulent du pot Des filles qui veulent du cock C'est un épine de cop Ou si tu fais ton snob Y'a non qui font des American stop Oui pong la trans canadienne avec le stop Oui sonne chez son boy parce qu'il vient de bot Pour une clé de rush qui allait ouvrir le bloc Pour le fromage y'a des gars sur des têtes des coches qui se pètent, des fuck qui se pètent, des patriotes qui se dead, gomme et notes sont raides, c'est le pop Montréal, ici on plotte pour le bread, puis la crosse à paye.